Hello everyone, it's Matmus. I hope you are having a great day. Thank you for stopping by and watching this video today. So yes, today's video isn't exactly about video games, and unfortunately, they're not always going to be about video games. Now and then I like to talk about th something a little different. And today I was searching through the realms of YouTube, and I came across a very interesting video, which I am going to show you guys. You can review it with me. And we're going to discuss it. Now, as you can see in front of you, you have the beautiful M60. This is a classic era tank. It is an absolute gem of a tank from the United States military. Uh, built in the 60s, classed as the Model 60 tank. Uh, we're not going to go over its history too much because that is not the purpose of this video. But as you can see, it is an absolutely beautiful vehicle. It is uh, powerful, strong, uh, definitely a uh, muscle tank, I would say, of its day. Uh, and uh, definitely a, I guess, standard of tank that was uh, maintained throughout the American army. Uh, later on in its career, um, but uh, what we're going to talk about is this particular video that I found and how the M60 is getting an upgrade. Now, this upgrade has been um, offered by Raytheon. Now, I didn't even know that the M60 series was still continually being upgraded, which is really interesting to see. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video. Uh, feel free to uh, leave your opinions and comments on the video itself as well. I will link it in the comments uh, and description section below. So you can have a review again if you wish. But uh, we're just going to have a quick look at the video here guys and uh, we'll discuss it afterwards. So I hope you enjoy. For over five decades, the battle-proven M60 has earned a reputation as the workhorse tank for armies around the world. The M60 has evolved with improved weapon At the historic Aberdeen Proving Ground, Raytheon's modernized M60 tank meets the most rigorous demands for today's modern battle. Raytheon has the proven engineering experience to effectively integrate modern hardware and software at a fraction of the cost of replacement. The Raytheon modernized M60 tank adds a significant operational and lethal advantage to the M60A3 that already maintains a notable battle history. The Raytheon modernized M60 tank. Better value, better engineering, better performance. Only through Raytheon's Service Life Extension Program. So... Let's go over this video real quick, we're going to play it back, we're going to go through some of the features that they discuss, and kind of have my thoughts and opinions on a little bit. The one thing I will say is, as I said before, it was a complete shock to me that they're actually bringing up an upgrade for this particular uh, armored fighting vehicle. I never even thought these vehicles were really being utilized that much anymore, I know they were in sort of uh, countries that can't really afford the top tier sort of tanking systems that are going out there nowadays. But uh, I never really thought that a Western world country would be actually developing more upgrade packages slash conversion packages for it. Which is actually really cool to see, um, considering the way modern day uh, equipment is going nowadays in terms of cost effectiveness. It's getting very expensive, 
and uh, governments just don't want to be spending millions and millions and dollars of dollars on equipment when they can just currently upgrade the equipment they have. Uh, this is also apparent for the Challenger 2 vehicle. They are uh, currently trying to find out a new upgrade package for that also instead of transferring to a new particular uh, weapon system or new tank in general. Um, so yeah, let's just go over the video again and quickly review what exactly these guys are going to be doing to this vehicle. So here we are then. So it looks like Raytheon is taking on this program. Um, so the M60 obviously has some fantastic history behind it. It's a very impressive vehicle and it's nice to see it's getting a facelift, uh, the M60 A3. And uh, let's be honest guys, this tank has just that huge American heritage behind it in terms of the warfare that it's seen and the kind of combat that it's seen. Um, and it is an impressive beast. I, I, I've seen this thing, you know, up front and I can't tell you how impressive it is. It's just beautiful. Um, and just kind of reminds you like American muscle, you know, the American muscle tank. So let's just quickly go over exactly what the uh, SLEP program is then, shall we? So Raytheon has pretty much decided to, I guess, give an extension to countries who own this vehicle who want basically a better tank but for a lot less money. Which is in today's modern military climate very, very, very important. Um, Everybody's reducing their defense budget. I mean, substantially. Guys are just chopping, chopping, chopping. Whether you're at the top with the United States Army, from the British to all the way down to the bottom, um, it's just money is tight around the world, and we have this huge oil crisis going on worldwide kind of thing. Um, and the defense needs to trim the fat, really. And at the end of the day, if they can find means to upgrade their vehicles to cover their, I guess, uh, defense requirements, then they're going to do so. And I guess Raytheon has decided to help out the M60s that are out and about in the world. Now, I'm not particularly sure which countries have this particular weapon system, um, or this tank, sorry, but uh, it would be nice to know, you know, if many Western countries are still using them. I don't believe they are, to be honest. Um, it's quite a dated bit of kit. And the Americans may still be using it, but I'm not sure. Please leave a comment below. So yeah, the Raytheon Service Life Extension Program, or the SLEP. Now, obviously, some of the key features they're aiming for here is increased lethality, um, the range, I guess, was a little less than expected in the olden days. Better accuracy and obviously mitigates, uh, blah, blah, blah. Improves performance. We know what they're talking about. Um, but at the end of the day, the simple little upgrades that get put onto this vehicle are very, very, very um, minor, I'd say, in terms of changing to an entire new vehicle platform. Now, to procure and design and build a completely new tank would be cost ridiculous ridiculous it really would it would be so expensive to design new vehicles for countries who can't really afford them and um, if they're still running the m60s then this is a really nice feature for them to have um reduces training costs so this is the first point they bring up yes of course it is um when you design a new tank you're gonna have to you know train up the people to fix them to repair them um you know to actually drive them to shoot them to command them whatever it may be there may be doctrine you maybe need to update when producing a new tank there's a whole world of training that needs to go into producing a new vehicle with this obviously it completely reduces that most of the crews are already going to know exactly how to operate the tank itself they're also going to know how to um, maintain it a lot easier and all that sort of stuff so really it's chopping a huge cost uh, you know part of the entire program which is really really cool to see um, as you can see here, this guy's pumping rounds into the breach, already know what they're doing, repairing it and such. Um, and here's our beautiful 3D M60 here, it's beautifully modeled that tank. Um, so another key feature is the engine upgrade. 950 horsepower from what I believe was either 650 or 750 horsepower. Very, very nice um, for a tank of this size. It's obviously going to be very, very handy. Uh, I think this was one of the last tanks to be produced in steel. Now. Don't hold me on that. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure this was the last tank that the Americans built that was made of steel completely. Um, nowadays, tanks are, have a, a magnitude of different materials, both inside and outside, ceramic armors and such. But I think this is one of the uh, last tanks that were made of steel for its main armor. Um, so this engine upgrade is obviously going to help out a lot here then with the uh, the weight of the vehicle. Obviously, when you upgrade a vehicle too, you're, all, you're also going to be upgrading potentially its weight, the new components, the items that you put on the vehicle you're going to need to encompass for that with uh, a powerful engine to keep it rolling and that's what they've done they're going to put a 950 horsepower engine in it that is pretty darn powerful guys considering uh, the size of this tank and uh, the kind of equipment that it's holding on it i'm not sure of its exact weight but 950 horsepower is pretty powerful for this thing but let's not get too cocky and ahead of ourselves here 
the end of the day, the upgrades they may be placing onto this vehicle might only just come, you know, even out in regards to the actual power to weight ratio of this tank. Uh, they also mentioned talking about zero hour uh, condition on this tank. So what that basically means is when they're upgrading these engines, they're going to basically turn them back into this as if this engine had never been run. So here are some of the other key features that the tank is going to be upgraded to. Uh, they're getting a gunner's handle, an actual proper gunner's traverse handle, electronic left and right paddle sticks, uh, kind of joysticks. Um, I know there's a name for them and I forget it every time and I know there's going to be a cav gunner or someone's going to shout at me and say this is what the name of those sticks are, I can't remember what they are but uh, they are installing them which is really nice to see. We're getting upgraded turret drive electronics and elevation and traverse drives which is going to be really han handy for any moving targets and basically just gives the tank better uh, operational effectiveness in terms of accuracy when you're able to stabilize move traverse the gun nice and crisp and easily it's going to give you a lot better shooting power it's going to make your gunner easily uh, sorry your gunner's life a lot more easy trying to get that reticle on target so that's really nice to see um, and probably is going to reduce um, the cost for upgrading, repairing old equipment that is still on the vehicle when they can basically put this new stuff in there um, and the guys who are actually repairing this stuff can actually say, well, we already know what this stuff is. We use it every day on other vehicles. It's kind of going that cross compatibility side, which is really nice to see. Let's move on then. So yeah, we get, there it says more responsive operation. The gunner's going to have a lot more easy of a time using it. Uh, the gunner's also going to get a gunner's display uh, for improved accuracy and a better fire control computer, which is going to be very, very handy. This is a very important part, the uh, digital fire control unit, again, trying to make that gunner's life a lot easier. Uh, this looks like a very similar gunner's control unit to the Abrams. Uh, the commander is also getting his own uh, vehicle display, which is obviously going to display his map details, any GPS data he has. He may also be able to observe through the gunner's sight at the same time and all that good stuff. Very, very handy piece of equipment. Gives you a better battle picture for the tank, and again, quite a simple upgrade. I mean, it really, all this is is linking into the other systems within the tank. Nothing particularly major. They're not overhauling the entire thing. They're just giving it some new uh, features for both the commander and the gunner. They're also going to give it a thermal sight, which of course is going to be very, very handy to have. We're always going to be able to want to fire at night. Um, let's move on. So, digital fire control unit. Again, very, very important uh, upgrade here with a stabilized mirror. We are able to either fire on the move or uh, fire at targets on the move a lot more easily. We're not going to have to track that target as a gunner manually. Um, very, very simple upgrade. Well, I guess not really simple, but very, very key upgrade to those already operating this tank to engage targets from afar, moving targets. It's difficult for a gunner to put a round on target when it's moving on the vehicle's moving. Sometimes they may have to come to a complete stop. I know for sure some of the old older uh, m 60 a1s, I guess, would have had to probably hold uh, position to engage. I know when I'm playing uh, Steel Armor Blaze of War, I never seem to get a round on target in the M60 in that game. But this feature is obviously going to be helping dramatically in getting rounds on target, so really nice to see. Like uh, the M2 Browning on top there. Another very important upgrade, the 120mm cannon uh, is replacing the 105mm cannon for increased firepower. Now we've also got to take into consideration here when we upgrade a cannon like this, uh, we're transforming its ammunition. Now, majority of the ammunition that the United States military use for, um, you know, for their main guns is obviously 120mm cannon. I'm presuming so now that if these countries are buying these new upgrades through Raytheon, the new SLEP program, they're obviously going to get ammo a lot easier than the 105mm cannon ammo that's out there not right now. You know, across the board trying to standardize their ammunition is going to make a lot more sense. And obviously the increased firepower. I'm not too sure if this gets uh, different variations of rounds that can be placed through the gun compared to the 105. Probably not so much. But let's be honest, the bigger the gun, the bigger the punch. Um, and this is obviously going to be a really nice upgrade for the tank. So I'm not too sure what it does though in terms of space inside the vehicle. Whether the 105 and 120 breaches are going to make a lot more difficult for loaders to operate. Slash gunners beside them. You know it's a little bit more cramped in there. Not entirely sure. I don't think it's going to be much difference marginally. But something for them still to consider when they're looking at potentially buying this upgrade. Let's keep going here then. Looking beautiful. Okay, and as before, increased lethality range. Uh, the gun is obviously going to give them a lot more range into getting rounds on target. You can see it punching rounds down range right now. Um, which is basically, again, 
putting a bigger gun with um, better ammunition in it is going to give you a lot more lethality. As you can see, the roundabout punch through the side of this tank here. Um, it's not really much of a match for that round. It's a complete husk. Um, but overall, guys, this package is, is just fantastic. I'm really glad it's happening. As you can see, this vehicle actually has bar armor on it right now, which, uh, you know, some of the other M60s I don't think I've ever seen. Again, bar armor to deter from uh, RPGs and uh, shoulder-fired weapons. going to try and prevent those rounds actually impacting on the side of the vehicle. It looks like they also may potentially be slapping on some other uh, armored panels on the side here. Uh, I know there's a couple slapped on the front here. They're bolted to the front. And uh, at the back, it looks like there could potentially be an air conditioning unit placed on the back there, because I know that's nice and handy to have. I'm not entirely sure what this part is on the front here, um, on the bot front, on, above the uh, front left track, just on the mud guard there. I'm not entirely sure, but I will do some research, see if I can find out about that. Um, but yeah, it still looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm not sure if they're doing any upgrades on its suspension and such. It Probably not, they haven't really you know mention too much about this but I think what they're aiming for mostly is both armor uh, upgrading its armor package being able to you know slap on new panels and such on the side um, and yeah you know as it says here better performance better engineering but at the end of the day guys this is basically something that is going to allow for the customers that already own these vehicles a short sharp quick um, you know program where they can say let's just put something on these vehicles to keep them at least combat effective for another say five to ten years where we can maybe have the time or the resources to build up to actually procure and design and build or acquire a new tank to you know replace the ones that they currently have which I think is a really really cool um, thing for them to do and uh, it's nice to see the M60 still rolling around uh, a lot of tanks out there have you know gone to the scrapyard they never made it past their their sell by date, but this one's still going strong in certain countries. Like I said, I'm not too sure entirely which countries. I think Turkey may still be running them, uh, maybe Egypt, a couple other countries like that. Um, and you know, good, good for them. Uh, maybe not so much Egypt nowadays because I know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on over there. But uh, anyway, guys, I just thought I'd uh, fire this video out there. I'd like to get some opinions on it. I know there's a um, a few people who love their M60s. I know I do. I think they're a fantastic tank. Uh, really, really enjoyable tank to be around. And, uh, yeah, so, please, guys, I'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on this upgrade. What do you think? Uh, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think they should get rid of the program completely? Um, maybe go into, uh, you know, start figuring out new weapons. You know, this thing's had its day. Let's put it to the, the scrapyard. It's, you know, it's time is done. Or do you think it's absolutely a fantastic little uh, upgrade for it to have? Really cost-effective, nice to see. Let me know. Leave in the comments below. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much so much for watching and all the best. Bye-bye.